Hi everybody, I'm here at Warm and Cozy um, to talk to you. I am Carla McGuire and I'm going to share with you a little bit more information about triangulations. I'm here today with Sarah and Danielle, so thank you very much ladies for inviting me in to talk about triangulations. And um, you may hear them comment from time to time. If I'm trying to explain something and they don't understand it, they're going to be asking me questions. So uh, Danielle has this available. And once you see it in, in motion, I think you'll just fall in love with it as much as I do. Uh, the reason I like triangulations is I always tell everybody when I quilt, I strive for perfection. I very seldom achieve it. And it just kills me when I lose a point on my half square triangles or my flying geese, especially flying geese. So well, I'll give you a little bit more information on triangulations and, and what perhaps what I use it for and why I like it so much. But let's just go through the basics of how triangulations works and what it is. It comes as a disc. You just put it in your computer disc drive and put it on your computer. It's PDF file, and um, it will allow you to print out sort of like paper piecing pieces. I printed some on regular computer paper because I thought it might show up a little bit better than the newsprint. But it, um, it'll, it, it's basically paper piecing, but it allows you to get perfect size flying geese, half square triangles, our quarter square triangles. And we'll go through each one of these in just a minute. Okay, so Carla, how would you recommend somebody preps their fabric for using the triangulation? Oh, that's, a, that's another great question. And it's a lot of personal preference, but I will tell you what my personal preference is. Um, before, it, before I do anything, any kind of cutting or traditional piecing for paper piecing, anything, I will spray my, with spray starch, I'll use a very inexpensive brand, spray the tar out of it till it's practically dripping, and then I'll go hang it on um, a laundry rack and let it dry. It takes about an hour and a half or two hours to dry. If I'm in a hurry, or if I find out, oh, you know what, I need this color and I didn't spray starch it and now I've got everything ready to go and I wanna do this one, I'll still spray starch it really heavily and then I will um, use the iron and press it until it's dry. Um, I really like the air dry method. Um, this was taught to me by an, an old quilter and I didn't believe that it made a difference and oh my gosh, guess what, it makes a difference. So I'm really, excited to do it the way it, it should do it that way if i have the time if i don't have the time to let it air dry starch it but by starching um and karen montgomery i saw so if you haven't seen any of karen montgomery stuff i know danielle carries a lot of her patterns in the shop um she has become one of my favorite people to watch uh during this whole covid thing she's done a lot of videos but she does this one um demonstration where she lays the fabric out on the ironing board and she sprays it just with, like I said, you can use a very inexpensive spray starch. You don't have to, I mean, I love Best Press and I love the smell of some of the stuff, but you don't, when you're gonna use, you know, use it a lot, mm -hmm. you know, who can afford it? But, um, if, but if you spray it, you'll see the fabric actually pre-shrink. Mm -hmm. So if you don't pre-wash, you cannot still pre-shrink your fabric just by using spray starch. Um, and so when we're doing paper piecing or any type of, you've got biased edges. And anytime you've got biased edges, you really want to starch your fabric and then press it dry or, or let it air dry and then spritz it with a little bit of water and repress it. So. Yeah, you know I'm a starcher. <laughs> well, I, I used to not be. Me either. I wasn't a pre-washer I... and I wasn't a starcher because, you know, well, that just takes up more time. Right. Okay, what I finally taught myself was that quilt that I'm going to spend hours on anyway is going to stay sewn and quilted long past my lifetime. Right. 
So I had to probably just take the extra two seconds and and do yeah. it correctly. Yeah. So that's what I've been um, trying to teach myself over these last few years is that quilt's going to stay quilted. So yeah. make it as good as you can make it. We all get in such a hurry, right? I know, right? And we don't need to. It's fine. No, especially with this particular hobby, but there's always another quilt that I want to make. There's always another project, and uh, but it, if I make a mistake and I see it before I've quilted it, I will now stop and, it, depending on how bad it is, <laughs> and I will typically go ahead and take it out and tell myself, this is going to stay quilted, now's the time to fix it, just don't let it bug you, just get it done. And it's worth the time to have frustration-free quilting. That's true. Right. I mean, the thing that when you start your when you start your fabric and then you cut it and you start to work with it, once your fabric is really starched, it's almost like a very stiff piece of paper. And you know, Bunny Hunter is one of my favorite quilters, and she would always say, "Shift happens with mm -hmm. fabric, and shift does happen." Um, but when it's like paper it doesn't shift as easily. Yeah, also I find um, that you've worked with it a little bit, so it's not um, sticking to itself or sticking, like it's easier to get things to lay where I want them to lay right. when it's already been starched. Right, and then when you're open, pressing your seams open, it doesn't take much at all to right. get them to lay open if, you, if you've worked with pre-starched fabric. Very good. The, all of the particular, they're, I'm sorry, <laughs> they're in different um, files, so it's several PDFs, and in that PDF, it'll give you a sizing chart as well as a lot of instructions. So I had printed off the quarter square triangle uh, instructions, and it's just about, you know, 10 pages or so. It gives you sizes and whatnot. So all the information you need is right at your fingertips. If you don't use it for a month or two, all you have to do is look through the instructions and you'll pick it up really quickly. So I'll just stop you real quick. So mm -hmm. you can do a lot of sizes with this, right? I oh. mean, this is not just um, only the whole inch or only, you know, holes and halves or things like that. Right. This is the reason I just love it so much is because... I've made a ton of large quilts. So now I'm very interested in making miniature quilts. Well, maybe other people are a lot more skilled than I am, but when I'm having to sew a one inch piece of fabric to another one inch piece of fabric, and I've got to get it under my presser foot and just position just so, um, it doesn't come out pretty. But, you can go down as uh, on this particular one. This one's in eighths, and this is on the a uh, half square triangle. No, this is on the quarter square triangles. It goes down to three quarters of an wow. inch. I know the half square triangles. I believe go down at least to an inch. It might even be uh, an inch, uh, half an inch. But uh, and those are finished sizes, so it's like an inch finished size. So um, if you're into miniatures and making miniatures, this is definitely the way to go. Uh, so what I've worked at, what I brought today though, as far as half square triangles, I thought we'd start there first, um, is I brought with me the ones that finish at two inches, because normally we're cutting a two and a half inch uh, for a square uh, for some for a quilt. And the one that comes, so for the two inch finish, the directions tell you what size to cut it, what, what size to cut your fabric, what um, is going to be your sewn size. So after I'm done with this, it's gonna be two and a half inches. And then what's my finish size? It's gonna finish in the quilt at two inches. So when I know what I'm going to finish in the quilt hat, um, but it, it's kind of like a cheat sheet. It tells you everything you need to know. Now, if I look at this page for the two inch finish, and if I cut my fabric this size to put behind it, I'm gonna get 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'm going to get 12 half square triangles. So you may say, great, I need two or I need four. Um, and I don't want to waste a piece of fabric that is, is this size. I don't want to waste two pieces of fabric that that's that size. Okay, that's great. If you just need four, cut this off right here. I just take my rotary cutter hold my ruler there and slice it off and now all I need is fabric to cover those those four spots and so out of so maybe you need eight so okay I'm going to sacrifice this guy in the middle I'm going to cut here and here um, this what I'm holding up is newsprint um, paper like uh, they call it foundation paper Danielle at Warm and Cozy sells it here uh, the Carol Doe there's a hundred sheets in here, eight and a half by eleven, for fourteen ninety nine. Goes right through your printer, and that's what's good about this particular her brand is it goes through most printers without a problem. And then that's going to be easier to peel off, right? Than than your regular. If they were using uh, their standard home paper, computer printer, paper. Yeah, you absolutely can print on that, mm -hmm. but it might be a little bit more difficult to to tear away from them. Block. Exactly. Um, yes, you can use regular, but regular computer paper actually might be more expensive in the long run, depending on what weight of paper you normally buy for your um, printer. But it also, like Danielle was just mentioning, even if you you have to lower your stitch count when you're when you're sewing, um, but it's it is harder to tear off. Where this, if it's hard to tear off at all, which it isn't, but you can dampen it a little bit, and it's just going to fall away. And, and you're going to be gone. So um, the one thing that you absolutely have to remember is to lower your stitch count. I put mine on like 1.8, 1.5, somewhere in that neighborhood, because uh, I normally would sew a block at 2.2 uh, 2 or 2.4. Um, some people sew at 2.5. I think that's when I do that, it's a little too loose, so my stitching tries to come back out on me. So, um, but on paper piecing, 1.8 is is fine. It, you're small enough a stitch and it'll tear off easily. Um, let's see, is there anything? So, what's great about this also, and it'll tell you, you sew on the dotted lines, you cut on the solid lines, and you've got a perfect two and a half inch half square triangle or whatever size you're going after. You will have that perfect thing. And there's little arrows, so you can just follow it around and you can do that all, that whole page without breaking your thread. Exactly. Um, you don't have to, but even if, you can still do it even if you decide you just want to use the top four, you still can follow your triangles. And if you just travel um, outside your dotted, outside your solid lines, because you're going to cut on your solid lines. So you could even kind of travel around without having to break thread. Um, that's important to us quilters. It's not so bad when you've got this little button that you push and it cuts. Mm -hmm. So that's not so bad. So that's the half square triangles. And I can go through and demo one if you would like. Um, I thought maybe we'd... Uh, I'd really like to see the flying geese demoed. Okay. I think the half square triangles make sense. Um, but yeah. Yes, so the, the, the flying geese are the ones where you actually have to use an add a quarter ruler. So one of the, the size that I um, printed off was, well, this one is, you know what, we'll use, I printed it off on regular um, printer paper because I see that that's a different size that I printed. So this one's going to finish it two by four. So it's a two and a half by four and a half. Um, the one thing when you're printing your paper, I should mention, is make sure you're printing to actual size. So check your printer settings. You don't want to be reducing or enlarging. And what I do after I print it off, now that I use the same printer, I don't have to do this. But the very first time I did this, I got my ruler out. This needs to be four and a half up. I'm right on. And then this needs to be two and a half up right on. So I, I just spend one second to double check it. So now what it tells you to do, it actually gives you the directions right up here at the top. Um, so I need a square. 
that is five and three eighths. And you know, if you're using the other methodology, guess what? So you typically cut your square at five and three eighths or five and a half. It, it, so you're not wasting any fabric. Right. That was part, one of my going to be one of my questions today was if you are using a pattern and the pattern tells you to cut your fabric at a certain size, are we going to have to be changing our cutting for for using this method? That's a good question. That is a really good question. And I noticed I was working on a um, one the other day, and it was using the you know four in one methodology for making flying geese, and they cut theirs exactly the same size. Then there was one that they was a different methodology, and so I'm like, okay, well, but I want to I want to do it this way, and I need to if if I how many do I need? If I need four. Um, I'm going to get four triangles for that middle piece to start with. So um, the five and three eighths, it, what what size were they telling me? And they were telling me two, I want to say it was maybe two and five eighths or whatever. Anyway, when I added them together, I wasn't going to use any more fabric doing it this way. And what's neat about, I don't think I mentioned this about the flying geese, what's really neat about the flying geese is you can make them individual. So if you need individual flying geese that you're attaching for some sort of star, you got a solid in the middle, you do them individually. A lot of the patterns have four flying geese in a row. And they have, they have this in the triangulation where you just print off the page where they're all kind of stuck together and you can make four right in a row. And this was the one where it actually used a lot less fabric to make. I used this on the um, April stash pot pie. And this is how I made all the flying geese for the April stash pot pie. It was it was terrific. I was so excited because I don't think Fast I... Fast and perfect. And perfect. Yeah. Mine is perfect. Okay, yeah. So it doesn't slow you down. And, and it's perfect. And I that's, gosh, when you can get fast and perfect. So those are four, but they're connected. So if you need four that are exactly the same, you still have to use the other sheet that, that has them individual that way. Right, unless for some reason you need them connected. This is right. connecting and it's taking your quarter inch off of each one and sewing them together. So if you need four, completely separate ones that are going to go maybe be attached to a, a, a middle block or something, you need to do them individually. Okay, so um, I need a square. I should have brought over the um, Stripology ruler because that's my very, very favorite ruler in all three sizes. I love all three sizes of the Stripology. And Danielle has one here. How about that? Awesome. Thank you. Okay. And it says five and three eighths. Oh, and that's what I love about this little ruler because we have a three eighths inch mark right on the ruler. So all I have to do is put that on the edge of my fabric, pick up my rotary cutter, make sure I've got it open, and I'm going to scoot you down just a little bit and cut on the five. We'll see. Oh, good. So I'm wondering how dull my blade was. I didn't test that blade before I came over. And and the nice thing about this is I'm doing it's like paper piecing, right? So if I'm if I'm if I want to cut it five and a half, I can do that with this. It's just going to be a bigger piece of fabric. And then um, for your middle, we're doing this for the middle piece, and I'm just going to line this up. And I use. I could change rulers, but why? I can just use the side of that one. I do like this Martelli spinning mat. It's really cool. It's got ball bearings in there. And Danielle can get these for you. And um, then you don't have to pick up your fabric and, and try to reposition it and get it exactly right. We can just cut the other diagonal. And again, it doesn't have to be just perfect on this because it's gonna, it's, it just needs to be bigger than my triangle. So I'm looking at this the way I can see it. You guys would look at it this way. 
You can use a light box to make it super easy. I usually just hold it up to a light or to the window. Your very first piece is always done a little differently with paper piecing. And, and this truly is paper piecing, this particular. This other is quasi paper piecing, but you're not adding a quarter ruler. You're not, you don't need any other rulers, nothing. Um, but the flying geese are, I would consider it paper piecing. So on the very first piece, I put a little dash of, of um, blue, and I like the Soline blue, I like the yellow. So buy the yellow refills, Danielle, because um, the blue and the pink gets gummier faster. I know, I'm not as crazy about that. So I can see my triangle, and I'm putting it on the back of my paper, but you can see, um, I don't know if they can see on camera, Sarah, but I can, I can lay this down and what I'm after, when I lay this down and I've got it glued on there and I hold it up, I'm too far to the right and I don't have a quarter inch over here. So I'm just going to scoot it over just a little bit. And that's all you need to do is make sure, and then I scooted it too much. If I have my light box under here, and then what I'm going to do, because I've been moving this around a bit, I'm going to give it a little more glue because I that glue won't stay, it won't be much in your project and it'll wash right out. Now, if this, if I cut my piece a lot larger, then I would take um, just some something very thin. You can even use on these rulers, they're beveled down like this. So you can put the ruler, the beveled in down on, on the two. So on this, number one piece is your big triangle. The next thing you want to do is the second piece of your triangle, which is going to be what you have on your left hand side. So you take the beveled edge of your ruler and you can fold your paper over on it like this. And you just need to make sure you got a quarter inch of fabric there. Um, if you're doing miniatures, I have a, an add an eighth ruler. I like to use a separate piece because then my ruler, the add, the add part of the ruler, which is that little lip, kind of hooks right on next to it, and then you can slice that off. So if you're doing miniatures, you want to add an eighth ruler because you want your seams to be even littler. Most of our quilting is, is of a size that adding a quarter inch is what you need to do. So there's our quarter inch, we're good. I don't even have anything to cut off here. Now we're ready to add our, our triangles on two and three. Um, and it tells you right on this page, how big do I need to cut my squares? Well, if they're both the same size for each size, um, you could just cut one square at three and a quarter So on this side of the ruler, I have the quarter inch mark. I'm going to cut that at three and a quarter. And and, a quarter. and then I only need half of it. That does not look like three and a quarter to me. I must have cut it on the wrong thing. Oh, I did. I cut it on three and three quarter. Three and a quarter. And then you're going to cut it right down the middle and that's going to give you a pink one on each side. Now a lot of times, this is where you have to look at your pattern, sometimes they want you to put a different color on the right on, and on the, le on the left and on the right. So you just have to think about this block is going to be the way you see it here on the front. So um, I'm going to, if I put my pink over here, I can just lay it down. I don't even pin mine, and I certainly don't use the glue here. I just take it like this to the sewing machine. So now what we're going to do is just sew right along that line, and I get to sew right on the top of the paper so I can easily see my sewing line, which I do really love being able to do that. I take one or two stitches past that line, which is fine, and I'm just going to cut our thread here real quick. Fold this up. And voila, we got half our flying geese done. 
I am a presser, so I will often take it right over. I will have my little iron right next to me, and I will go ahead and press that. And you want to press this one. A lot of people would say, well, you're working on the opposite side for the next one. Why do you need to press it? Because you need this little spot right up here to lay nice and flat. Because when you cut, when you trim your block, this is vitally important that I have a quarter inch above my point because that's where my seam is going to be in my finished quilt. So it's critical that you have that in there. Now we're ready to put the um, on the other side. And so this particular, in this particular pattern that we're making up, I have both um, pink on each side. So it's going to be nice and easy. I just lay my piece back down on the wrong, right sides together on the wrong side of the paper. And then I'm going to slide it under the machine, making sure my um, fabric didn't move, which I, I kind of did move it. All right. And then we're going to just sew the other side down. And in this particular situation, because I did not have, um, I did not make my triangle extremely large, I didn't even have to use the add a quarter ruler because I didn't have more than a quarter inch of fabric sticking over there. Um, we could have put this, before we sewed this on, we could have, have laid this down, used the add a quarter ruler, and we could go ahead and trim off this, this little top piece right here. We could have trimmed that off. And then I would press this. And then when we go ahead and we'll just go ahead and cut our block out of here. I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna be cutting on the right side of the paper and I'm gonna be cutting on those solid lines and we're just going to take our block, right? What I do when I have a bunch of these to make is I just go ahead with a pair of paper scissors and cut them all apart so that I'm just working with one at a time and at my sewing machine. I'm just sort of working with one small block. But you don't have to. You can work with the whole page. But there we are. There's our little block. We've got our perfect quarter inch up here that we can now sew that into a quilt and we're not going to lose our quarter inch. And that's all there is to it. Um, this is how hard this is to tear off. And that was with regular printer paper. This was with regular printer paper. Ta -da. Very um, and if I do several of them at a time, like the April Stash Pot Pie is 48 of the four, um, in a row of these. Mm -hmm. um, I just sit there at night and watch a TV show and tear my paper off and throw it in a little trash can that I've got sitting right there. But that, um, the only time you would need the quarter inch ruler is if you decided to start with a piece bigger than the five and three eighths, well, bigger than the, the square that they tell you to cut. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you might want to, because say, so. It's, and I've even um, was talking with one lady and she said, my triangles were just a little too small. And I, and if you don't get them positioned right, like you can, if you get it too far down here, you might not have enough when you fold it back. Um, and so I think if that's happening to you on a consistent basis, I can tell you you're not positioning your triangle in the right spot, but if it's a problem for you, cut it three and a half, and then you'll just have a little bit of waste when you cut it off. So that's the flying geese one. That's cool. Okay. Now, the last one I want to talk about is the quarter square triangle. And this honestly is the one that I use the least because every quilt that I've made in the last, since I've since I discovered triangulations, I've needed like three colors to make the quarter to make the quarter inch triangle. Um, not 
the, the yeah the quarter square tri um, the quarter square and it 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 didn't um, I'm like how am I going to do that I don't I didn't want to sit and think about it so, so those did, are pretty much specifically if the quarter squares are two different colors you, you know like two of them are two of them are one and color the opposite side and then you need two different colors for the other side so I started playing around with it and I went ahead and stitched out um, I took the same fabric, two different pieces of fabric, and put them together. And this particular size is a two inch finish. And it tells me that right on my paper. So I don't have to like remember what I printed off. Um, I can look at it and say, oh, this is what I'm, I'm you know, this will make 12 of these quarter square um, triangles or 24 units. So um, I laid it down, I, I sewed on the dotted lines. Now we're just going to trim off one of these. And you do trim on all the um, on all the solid lines. So even these little um, points over here, you go ahead and cut those off. And the reason you do that is check this out. When you do that, you now you know exactly how to line up your other one. So um, I'm going to tear this paper off. I'm going to press this to the dark side because that's what we always do, right? We press to the dark. Um, so that's half of my quarter square that I need. Now I need the other half. And if you needed it, again, if you needed it out of different fabrics, all you have to do is, is break the section apart and say, oh, if I only needed four, I could have got my other, you know, I can... Where do I get four? And you just count your triangles and then cut it cut it bigger so that you have enough room to work with. So you'll waste a little bit of your printer paper, but not much. And um, I'd rather waste paper than fabric. It's mm -hmm. I think paper's a lot cheaper mm -hmm. uh, than fabric. So I'm, I'm fine with wasting paper. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut another one out of here. And like I said, we can either pretend this is a different color or the same color. And I'm cutting on the solid lines. So you definitely want to remember that you're cutting on the solid lines. And I don't even usually use a ruler for these little bitty pieces because I can at least cut a quarter of an inch straight, believe it or not. Tear off the back. I'm over here and I'm going to press to the dark side again. And then all you do, I like pressing them this way because they're going to lock. They're going to lock right in the middle. They'll match up just perfectly. Sarah, I don't know if they can see how good that matches up. And then you just do your quarter inch seam. And I've got a couple of these done. And this is how cute it is. It's nice, the little points match. Yes. Um, when I sew this in, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm certainly not gonna lose any points at all. And I'm just a happy, happy camper. And this is little, and you know, this goes on up to larger sizes too. And the other day I needed a half square triangle that was six inches. And I thought, oh, surely I can make a half square triangle without using triangulation paper at six inches. But I just wanted to do the habit. They did. You know, nice. I was amazed at what size they they actually go up to. Oh, very cool. All right, I think that is all the helpful hints I had on the triangulations. And if people have questions, you know, I you shoot oh, it down. Uh, we were talking about this earlier about if you don't have, first of all, it can go in Mac or... Yeah, it can go on a Mac or a PC. And also, if you don't have a disc reader, we're always happy to help. If you purchase the um, copy, we're happy to help you figure out a way. Right. Yeah. And you, at this point, you do have to have a disc reader. You right. just buy it and have it, have it shipped to you. Yeah, if you need to bring in a flash drive, we can transfer the files onto a flash drive for you. 
so yeah. that you can access this on a computer without a disk drive. Right. Yeah. It's and it's once you have that, you're in great shape. You can make almost any size. The quarter square, or the half square triangles go. Um, there's a, a file for in sixteenth increments and one for quarter inch increments. So you can go. You can have really odd sizes. And like I said, if you're into making any kind of a miniature quilt, you'll you'll run into really tiny sizes and and you'll go. Um, the, the Kim Deal Flying Geese quilt that I made the other day, those are one and a half by two and a half finished flying geese. They were, if I had to piece them in a traditional method, I wouldn't show anyone my finished <laughs> quilt. <laughs> yeah. So, they're so really- you do, get, you do get them very perfect. Right, right. One of the other things I really love about this method is it's not like some of the other methods where you're stuck with a specific size. So I have to buy three different ruler sizes or three different whatever because I'm doing this quilt and it's this size. Then I want to do another quilt that's a different size. I have to buy another thing. Right. You don't have that with this. And even if you don't mind buying that additional ruler, how many times are you inspired to start on something and then, it, oh, I, I need the ruler to be this size. Now I've got to, you know, I've got to go make a trip or whatever. I, you know, my inspiration usually hits me either very early in the morning or very late at night. And so nothing's open. Right. And right. now I have all different kinds of sizes to play with. Right. So. And being able to print any size, you know, is the is the key. So you're not limited also you know like you didn't go buy a package because i've seen like flying geese on a roll or something right. like that you know well then you're limited to that size and then you're also limited to when you run out of that roll that's it you have to go buy more or whatever so this is great because you're you know one price you've got the the disc forever you can print as many as you want right that's a great point i love yeah that's what i'm so i'm so excited about triangulations and especially if you're like me and you strive for perfection, but I'm about as far from perfect as one can get. Mm -hmm. And this actually helps me a lot. So, Well, thanks, Carla, for everything. This was fantastic. Yes. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. Thanks, Danielle.